fast. Okay, I am going to make sure that we are we are. All right, guys, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, I know everyone was muted when they came in. Um, if you feel like you need to say something, feel free to unmute yourself at some point or use the chat thread. I will try to keep my eyes on it. But I'll be honest, um, other than presenting like it, you know, conference or Tuesday trainings, I've never had a Zoom this large. So I'm going to do my very best to field um, these questions. And I would love to open this up at the end for you guys asking anything that you really want. Um, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm happy to share. I'm just so really honored that some of your leaders wanted to hear from you. You're on YouTube. <laughs> What's that? We got a mute here. Um, just really honored to be here tonight. It's just like a kind of a full circle moment for, for me. So if you don't know my name, my name is Lindsay Percoco. Um, on Facebook, I'm Lindsay Coco. It's just been my alias since I was a teacher in Phoenix and my students couldn't say my last name and it just kind of stuck. Um, I have been with Color Street for almost exactly two and a half years. Um, so I'm about to have that little anniversary coming up. I'm a senior executive director, hoping to maintain that this month, <laughs> uh, as always. Um, I am under Julie Cruz, if you know who she is. Um, I actually have been in a um, couple other network marketing companies before I came to Color Street. And I attribute a lot of my knowledge from those companies. I really learned a lot about what I liked about certain companies. Um, I learned a lot about how important the team that I joined was. Um, and so I just kind of have a lot in my back pocket. So for those of you who don't have network marketing experience, I mean, this is just such a great place, in my opinion, to really start to gather that and to um, apply things that you learn from other people. Um, and so I live in Minnesota. I have a, my husband is a first grade teacher. I, I am a former teacher. That's how we met. And we have two young boys. Um, and this is my full-time job. Um, it has been since the beginning. Uh, I really had zero intentions of growing a team when I first started. I even said that to Julie. I'm like, I'm going to sell the heck out of this nail polish, but I'm not going to grow a team. And she's like, okay, well, joke's on me. Now I have this like in my opinion, a very large team um, that I am still trying to figure out how to be a good leader to them. I think we all have our strengths and our, and, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to say weaknesses, but things that we're always striving to do better with. Um, but one thing that I can say for myself, I was thinking about this tonight. I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very well-rounded stylist when it comes to this business. Um, I'm very good at sales. Um, I'm really good at, um, the personal connection with my customers. Um, I enroll consistently. Um, I'm not the top, like any of the top enrollers, but I am top in sales. Usually I'm, I'm usually in the top. I'm always in the top 50 somewhere for personal sales. Last month I had over like $11,000. I really strive to always hit $6,000 a month. I know that sounds crazy to a lot of you, but I really break it up into attainable goals. And that also has to do with parties. Um, I earned the Punta Cana trip and the Cancun trip. I had like, I don't even know, like 149 points for Punta Cana this year, which is stupid crazy. And a lot that obviously a lot of that came from sales. It came from my VIP group and it came from parties. And I know that's why you guys are here tonight. Um, I hope that something I say tonight is helpful for you. I know a lot of you are running parties right now and maybe not having tremendous success or maybe you're having just trouble even booking parties. And I hope you know that I wanna say this first and foremost, not every party I run is a slamming success. It is not. Even though the girls that I, I have parties for get all the same information, they get the same Lindsay every single time. It really does come down to a lot of how they're taking my information, um, how they are as a hostess and as a friend and how their friends are even too. Uh, and, and, and when you are having trouble booking parties, I want you to know that I do too. I have trouble booking parties. But the one thing that I always say is to pivot. And it's funny because I started using the word pivot a lot recently. And then corporate is using it constantly. But I think it's so important when you are faced, like you have an obstacle in front of you or something's not going quite right. I always say, what are you going to do? How are you going to pivot and get around that and find another way to make it successful? So tonight I want to talk to you all about um, some of my party basics, what my parties look like. And I want you to know that what I'm going to tell you, like the way I run my parties is not the only way to run parties. I listened to trainings when I first started. Um, if you know Molly Fitch, she was one of the very first uh, trainers that I listened to when I first started. And I thought she was like a freaking demigod. I was like, I will do anything this girl does. 
I took notes like a fiend. I've never taken notes like I did when I listened to her training. And I wrote down the things that resonated with me, the things that I thought that I could take and then change and make my own. Um, and that would work well for me. And then I, the things that I did and I didn't, I didn't use. So don't feel like everything I share with you tonight is something you have to do. Okay. Take what you think will work for you and use it and reevaluate, see if it went well. If it did continue, make it better. If it didn't, how can you make it better for yourself the very next time? So I did make a PowerPoint and I don't normally do this. So we're just going to have to, um, we're just going to go. <laughs> It'll keep me on track. Otherwise I'm going to start going off on tangents. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to pray to God that this works for me. So just give me a second. I've got 1,000 million things opened. Okay. I can't see you guys. Can somebody um, unmute themselves and let me know that they can see this? I can yeah. see it. Yes, we can. You can okay. see it. Perfect. Okay. Got it. All right. I can't see you guys at all on my side. So I'm just going to continue to move on. So tonight we're going to talk about rocking your parties and increasing your bookings. And I'm going to talk to you guys pretty generally. I don't want to get super, super deep, but I also don't want to be super surface level with this. So I did give a lot of examples as I'm going through. Um, so to me, parties are everything. Like, obviously I have a, I run my VIP group and I really pour a ton into it, but parties to me, mean so much to my business. We are a party, a party planning or a party company, right? Everything we do, it really is circled around those parties. If you're not having them, you are really missing out. To me, I always am looking to increase my sales and to keep my sales going. You know, people will buy from you maybe a couple of times and then they'll start to fall off. But how are you always going to keep that customer base growing? How are you always going to keep that? Um, you know, we started zero, guys. I started a big fat zero just like you do every single month. And I have to start all over. There's nothing worse than watching that best PV month drop to zero on the first day. Um, but parties really help. You know, that one hostess that, you know, says, yeah, sure, let's do it. She is then going to invite hopefully like 15 of her friends and family. And now you have an opportunity to get your beautiful face in front of them, show your personality, have a freaking blast with them, um, get sales, get future VIPs, get future parties, and even grow your team. So if you are not having parties, you are missing out. This is how I continuously grow um, and nurture my VIP group, especially for those that kind of, you know, get quiet in there. And so I know a lot of times we say, oh, that party was such a flop. You know, I didn't get anything good out of it. But I always take them and view them as learning experiences. You know, in every party, there can be something that you can learn from it. You know, maybe you didn't get a bunch of sales, but maybe you got another booking off of it. I mean, to me, that's a win. Um, you know, maybe you didn't get a bunch of sales, but maybe you converted like half the group into joining your VIP group, which is going to help build your customer base and give you an opportunity to continue to share a product with them in the future. You know, um, they are not all flops. There's always something we can learn from them. Do you like it better? I like it without. Why? Why, mom? I don't know who that is, but I cannot, I'm going to have to like go out of this to unmute you. I'm sorry. Um, so there's always just new things that we can continue to learn from our parties. So I really think for me that running effective parties really starts with creating a schedule that works for you. I will never put out there like, what, what day do you want to have a party? You know, let me know which day. I'm always telling them what my schedule is and, and um, having them decide out of those dates, which one works for them. Um, you know, even if you would take a party at any moment, any second of every day, you really do need to kind of you know, protect your space and protect your mindset and think about something that works for you. And that not, doesn't have to do with just the party day, but it really has to do with like reverse engineering. I don't know how that drawing just came up. That's funny. So reverse engineering. So if you, whenever, whenever I book a party, like if I get lucky enough to book a party, I immediately create and share the shopping link with that hostess. Um, I know Ashley had shared in her team page about kind of doing something similar to this. I do this all the time. And then I immediately message the hostess and I say, 
you know, hey, Mary, I know your party is not until March, but I wanted to share your shopping link with you right now, um, because if there's anything that you're wanting or needing between now and then, you can use your shopping link at any time to add to your hostess rewards. In fact, if you um, have any friends or family that would like to try Caller Street or asking you questions, this link is open. It's open now. You don't have to wait until party week or whatever it is. And so that helps to grow their sales right off the bat. So for me, I always reverse engineer. So if I know that I'm having a party on um, like the week of a Monday, whatever that is, the week prior, I am doing some of my like hostess coaching. I have a, um, like a hostess guide. It's nothing fancy, you guys. It just says it gives them their shopping link. I even give my sample request form because I don't open parties super early and like share the sample request form or anything like that. Um, I just kind of leave it into the hands of the hostess to share it if they would like. I know a lot of people do like hostess packets. You're going to want to get those shipped out. I personally do not do those. It's just completely up to you. But the week prior, you are getting the, the wheels turning for that hostess. And I also check, it says check their PPs. I check their personal pages to make sure that they're kind of doing what I'm asking them to do. On my end, I am mainly asking them to post on their personal page a picture of them, hopefully, and their nails, and just sharing one thing at a time that they like about Color Street. They're not even talking about having a party yet. They're just simply sharing something they love to plant that seed. And I tell them, this is how you're going to develop your invite list. Um, I do usually try to tell them to get like 50 people on that list, which seems daunting, but they kind of break it up right into their franks, just like we do. Um, you know, think about people that are their friends or relatives, you know, so on and so forth. And anyone also who comments on those posts or likes those posts, those are people that they can add to that invite list. And then on Friday, for me, this is what I do. On Friday, I create the Facebook group where I'm going to be doing the party if I'm doing it in a Facebook group. There are a lot of different ways to party. Um, I know some of you do things in events. I recently tried to do like some one hour live parties using my wheel of deals, kind of like a live sale, which was fun and switch things up. Um, I'm not going to train on that tonight because I just started doing it and I have things to work through <laughs> still. But I create the group, I get the pre posts up. So in the bottom, at the top of the page, you're gonna see this graphic here. I always do battle the hostesses. I always do this. I started this um, about five months into my, co my Color Street journey. I was moving literally a mile down the road, but it doesn't matter if you're moving a mile or moving cross country, with, which I've done before. We didn't have anywhere to live for a certain amount of time. And I had um, six hostesses that week. And I was like, what in the heck am I going to do? How am I going to post in six separate parties the same thing? I got to go live six separate times. I got to do all these things. And I'm like, you know what? I'm putting them in a group and we're going to call it Battle of the Hostesses. They're all going to have their own shopping link. Um, and then I am going to just say, okay, the, the hostess with the mostest at the end will get an extra gift from me on top of it. I've never had anyone have an issue with it ever. Um, at the bottom of it, you can see I have a link tree. So it's like what you use on Instagram. So my link tree, when they click on that link in my party post, it's going to take them to my link tree and it'll say Alicia's party, Wesley's party, Danielle's party. This way I only have to share one link at it, like one link for the whole party, which is freaking fantastic. Um, back to my um, pre post right here. I call this a quad post. There's four pictures. Above it is information and it's just welcoming them to the party. Um, I'm telling them that we're going to be having like the main shindig at, on Thursday. And that's basically a girl's night in. And if you don't know about what that is, I'll kind of share a little bit about it. it. Has information, but basically each picture they click on will give them more info. So the first picture they would click on it, the description will be information about Color Street. The second picture is how they shop. That's literally a screenshot of my link tree. You click on it, choose your hostess. I have information about the opportunity and our team um, workshop group that we have. And then also information on how to book a party. So that's there. It's the first thing they see. Um, I change the settings. I make sure, obviously, that only admins and um, can approve into the group. Um, I make all of my hostesses admins. And I have a membership question that says, like, which hostess invited you here? Um, and then also, do you, you, know, you plan to have lots of fun? You know, yada, yada, yada. Um, and they approve their guests in. I like them to see who's coming into the group for them rather than me doing it. Um, so I have that all set up. So then 
on Friday, I've, obviously I've created the group. Then I message my hostesses in a group. So prior I was messaging each of these ladies individually, you know, about my guide. But on Fridays, when I'm creating the group, I put them in a message thread together and I share basically my hostess coaching. Like, what am I doing to coach them to invite properly? Um, I'm, I'm highly against the invite button on a face in a Facebook group. It is to my opinion, it's tacky. If I get invited to a group without my knowledge, I immediately decline it. And a lot of people do, um, a lot of hostesses like to mass invite, um, and it never works ever ever, ever, in my opinion. So I'll even take a screenshot of the group and put a big red X through the invite button, say, do not use this. But guess what? One of them will use it. It always, they always do it. Remember, they all get the same information and they all take it differently. <laughs> um, I explained to them how to invite, you know, how to send private messages. I, you can even give them a script if that works for you. Um, I started implementing from Molly Fit. She did a training for our team too about a hostess bingo sheet, like a hostess bingo card. And basically they can earn extra goodies for doing things within the party, like interacting on all the posts. Maybe they go live, maybe they put up a post, um, they get party bookings, so on and so forth. That is really helpful um, for having really good interaction and seeing the hostesses that might even make really good stylists for you. And then they spend their weekend inviting to the group. So that's how it works for me. Then come Monday, I want to talk about how my parties look essentially. Now, keep in mind, my parties are ever evolving. Um, I change things up. I get bored. When I start getting bored, I know that my hostesses and my customers are probably getting bored too. But ultimately, things kind of have a skeleton that I follow. Um, I do have like a template that I use and, you know, I change things up now and again. But on day one, which would be Monday for me, I always have a welcome post and it's an interactive post. So I use the like welcome new members button, which you can only use on your computer. And I generate all their tags, which you can see here. And it was obviously a long list and I welcome them. Um, and I just try to get them to start interacting. The whole point of this is to start building that interaction in the group, because you know, if they're not, if they're not interacting, then Facebook doesn't show them the posts. Sometimes even when they interact, they don't show it. Um, another way thing that I do too, and this is a picture of me and it's like, show your Manny for a, a ticket. Um, I love to incorporate pictures of my hostesses throughout the party. I will scour their pages. I'll ask them for photos. Um, I'll make really fun graphics that include them. And so sometimes I'll use like, you know, drop a gif on how you know your hostess below when I tag them. So just a couple of different things that I do just to get things going. So then on day two for me, which is Tuesday, typically, I always go live at some point during the day. Um, I spend a good 30 minutes, usually try to do less, talking about like welcoming them to the party, explaining to them that this is a battle and that every you know purchase they make is going to helping their hostess win this battle. I talk about what colors I, um, I sew my nails to them. Um, talk about the different things that we offer, solids, glitters, overlays. I hit those ones hard. Um, I talk about how it's going to go and what they can expect. And I also talk about like my VIP group and the opportunity to kind of drop it in just a little bit, a little bit of my story. Uh, I also do an early bird special. You can do whatever works for you, but I'll post about that. And then I always do a battle board update. If I'm doing a if I'm doing a battle, which I always do, I always have at least two hostesses. And if I don't, I will move people so I can best use my time wisely. So they're together and I'm not doing like, you know, individual parties. I can't do it. it drives me nuts. But if it works for you, then you keep doing that. So I do a battle board update. And so at the end of every night, um, I used to be really hesitant to show like, okay, Alicia, after day one is at 186 and up, oh, Denise is at zero. Like I, that used to make me really hesitant and made me feel really bad. But what I have found is that it works. People don't want to see their friend lose. And my goal is just to get them to that 150 mark so they can start using um, their hostess rewards. This to me works and I do it every single night. Okay, so then on days three and four. So days three and four, I'm basically just sharing like 
again, kind of like that skeleton post, like what are the things that are important about our, our, our product and our company to share? Just an example here. I always share like, I'll, oh, by the way, in my welcome video, I'll usually do an application, not usually a full set because that takes a while, but sometimes I'll just slap a twosie on. Uh, sometimes I'll just put it on right over my current manicure just to show them how easy it is. But I always do share, um, like a YouTube video of some of you who are amazing at application videos, because I look like, I look like a monkey with three arms. Like I I'm ridiculous at application videos. So they're not my forte. That's okay. My friend, Julie Cruz is amazing at application videos. Some of you are. So I share hers, but I'll just share some graphics for an example here. Um, so I share those throughout the day. Uh, usually two to three times a day, I'll post in a party on regular days. But I always end the night with something fun and interactive, like which set would you pair with this outfit or what's your color street? Your, if you were a nail, what would you, your name be? That sort of thing. And I end the night with, a, if, with an update. Um, on day three, which is the day before, like the final culmination of my party, this is really important. I want you guys to pay attention to this if you're not already doing it. Um, this has been a game changer for me in booking parties off of my current party. I play the pick a number game. It started with the Amanda. I don't know if you guys have heard of Amanda Todd, but she did this like um, this whole training on basically a party booking game and it was a roll the dice, but that really overwhelmed me and I had to be like live for it and I didn't really like it. So what I like to do on day three or whenever, it doesn't matter, I put up this post here. It's like, let's play pick a number. This is how it works. Like you pick a number, basically post it in the comments behind every single one. There's a prize. It could be one of three things. Um, but basically you guys, you're really front loading these with mainly parties. I mean, hell you could put them all. You want a party you could do that. And I, I've done that before. So there's no shame in my game. And I remind them again, you know, this is, you know, if you choose to play, this is what you'll do. Um, and I will message you. And uh, so I do that. Now, some things too, like so let's say they pick number five and let's say five with some twosies instead of a party. I will mess, I always message them first and I say, hey, before I give you your prize, I just want to remind you, it could be one of three things. You have to take the prize you get. Are you ready for me to reveal your prize? And they'll say yes, or they'll ignore me. Some people ignore me. It's okay. I don't care. Um, if I know that the thing I'm about to give them is actually a prize, I'll say, hey, before I reveal your prize, if you want to upgrade to your prize and a party with me in March, I will let, I will include two sets of your choosing in my hostess bundle. Like I'll up it. And there are a lot of times they say yes. So I'm always trying to like squeeze everything that I can out of every single thing that I do. But I love that pick a number. This took me from bar like barely getting any party bookings to usually getting one to four off of everyone that I do, which is great. And so then on day four, um, I continue to post throughout the day uh, just the normal things that you normally would in a party. Um, and then I'm really reminding them, hey, tonight is the big night. We're having a girl's night in. It's going to be a one hour party. It's starting at 8 p.m. I'll be posting fast once every five minutes. You're going to be able to earn um, points or tickets into a drawing for some nail sets that I'm going to be giving away. And I always remind them they must have placed an order at some point during the party in order to be eligible. I'm not sending free sets to Marie who never ordered with her hostess. That's my choosing. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, I also am, you know, throughout the party and especially on this day, I am messaging the hostesses and just asking them how things are going. I'm encouraging them to post. Um, I'm encouraging them to usually even do like a welcome post in the group just to start off, which I forgot to mention. Um, I like my customers to see their hostess before they see too much of me, um, reminding them too to message their guests and let them know, hey, by the way, our party's happening tonight, it starts at 8 p.m., just wanted to make sure you knew, um, and I always like to do a little update as well in the group to say, hey, before we go in, this is what the party standings are. And so here are some things that I also add. So the girls' night in, guys, if you don't know what that is, I feel like a lot of you do, but I don't want to assume um, a girl's night in is just like a themed 
party that has posts that you put up like every five minutes or a lot of this or that. Um, this one happened to be a bachelor themed one, which ended up being really funny. It had a few risque things and I didn't know if it would be well received. It was actually my favorite one I've ever done. Um, but inside of that party from eight to nine, when I do it at night, by the way, I do it at night because most people are home and they're sitting on their phones. And that's why I choose that. Also Thursday nights are good nights for interaction. So are Sundays. Um, I would never do anything like this on a Friday night or a Saturday night if it was for somebody's party, just my two cents. But I always throw in the opportunity. So here's kind of a quad post of my, my stupid pictures, <laughs> um, but they earn tickets for asking me a question about being a stylist. I tell my story in the post, which is not all here. Um, and I also link my, um, our opportunity workshop for people that would like to learn more. So they ask me questions. That's a great place for you to start paying attention to who's asking those good questions. Write their names down, follow up with them. Um, you're going to know the difference between what's your favorite nail set and, you know, um, can you tell me more about the compensation plan or how long did it take for you to find success? Or I have a full time job and I really, this sounds really interesting, but I don't know if I could handle it. Those sorts of people but always throw the opportunity in. So I'm talking about it in my welcome video. Um, I'm posting about it here. And I also talk about it in my follow-up video at the end. Another thing too, I put up a post for, they can earn points if they book a party with me for the next month. So there's a little graphic here, which isn't so great, but then I have, I do hostess bundles now, you guys, I never used to. I used to only give one free nail set of their choosing if they booked a party with me. In the very beginning, their set came from my new stylist kit. But now I just include a set of their choice and it's just some goodies I find on Amazon. This is simple, face mask, a toozy and a um, cuticle stick. Um, so I post that and I show the rewards as well. In this post, it says, pick your date and the nail strip you'd like. And I tell them my dates that I have and how many spots I have available. And I will take more than two people or three people. I'm just putting that because when you put a number and you give them a date, it creates a sense of urgency. If you just say, pick your date for February, that again is not working in your calendar and not working again with your best interest in mind. So you tell them when you will host parties. Um, I also include bonus like extra tickets too for those that join my VIP group. I want them in my VIP group. Um, I'm constantly posting about my VIP group. So um, I always tell them they can earn tickets for that. If they're already in my VIP group, because they're like a returning customer, your tickets still count. And all throughout the week, all throughout the week, and usually at the end of the night, I'll always put up thank you posts for people who placed orders in that day. Um, I only do it at night because I just think it's a pain in the butt to post all throughout the day as orders come in, if they're coming in. Sometimes I'll combine them into one post. Um, you can't see it in here, but I'm thanking them. I'm tagging them. I'm also tagging their hostess and thanking them for supporting her. And then I say, don't forget to join Nail Chicks Boutique so you can be in with all the games and sales and giveaways that I do. Um, sometimes I even comment in the comments and I'll say, hey, Angela, when you get those awesome nail sets, will you make sure that you share your nail fee in Nail Chicks Boutique? So I'm always, 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 always trying to convert them into lifelong customers. Okay. So the day after the girls night in, um, is where I do a lot of my follow-up. Um, so I post more thank yous from the night before from more orders that came in. I send follow-up messages to every person that was in the group, every single person. And I keep track of who they're there for. I, you can usually tell, um, my follow-up messages is I'll thank them for their order. If they already ordered, I'll remind them about joining my VIP group and link it. I'll also remind them about my party dates for the next month. If they haven't ordered, I will do the same things, but I'll remind them like, hey, we're getting ready to close out. If you would really, if you'd like to support Heather, I know she would appreciate it. Here's her shopping link. And then I still give her the same info. So one thing I learned to do, and I remind myself is this. If let's say here you are at the end of the party, by the way, Denise here in the middle at zero, she never invited anyone to the group. So that's why she stayed at zero. But we had an $800 party, 145, 214, 387, and like six, I think 15. You guys, those are all over the board, right? So obviously Alicia just kicked butt. She took my hostess coaching and ran with it. Um, she was an amazing hostess. She was messaging her girls. She was interacting. Um, you know, 
Denise will leave her out of this. <laughs> Wesley at 145, she was quieter. You know, she didn't really do quite as much. They all got the same information from me. And so you have to remember too, sometimes you can't always like beat yourself up about maybe a party that didn't go in the way that you had hoped it would go. Um, they will do what they want with it. It's, it's up to them. You give them the information, you're running an awesome party. It's up to them to kind of show up and do their part. But if at the end of your time together, let's say some of them are really host, like close to like the next level of hostess rewards or somebody's sitting at $135 in sales, you can extend the party. You can extend it. Um, you can offer a last minute deal. Sometimes what I really like to do is the day after, I'll be like, this party's extended. I have a long post up here. Um, and I'll say like, you know, you know, Wesley's like two buy three, get one free orders away from earning her hostess rewards or whatever it is. And I'll say, can they get some help from their friends? I'm going to extend this today. And today, everyone who places a buy three, get one, it'll be a buy three, get two, meaning they'll get another set from me. So two sets for free. You can do twosies. You can do anything that you want to do. Um, I have a lot of sets, so I'm always giving them out. So don't be afraid to do something a little crazy. Um, when I'm done, like when everything's kind of done, I will go live again in the group. I go live on my phone um, and then I pull up like wheel of names on my computer and I'll put their names into the drawing and I'll, I'll draw for winners. I will thank them, thank the hostesses. I'll talk about the winner, what their hostess rewards ended up looking like, um, talk about future bookings and remind, uh, also share the opportunity again and my VIP group. Um, it's also a great idea afterwards too to, you know, share pictures or videos of like the, the rewards that the hostess claims. Sometimes having them see like, oh my gosh, like look at what Alicia got for hosting this party. I want to host a party too. So now that's kind of how the party looks for me, but I know you're like, okay, that's great. You had a party, but I can't get parties. Girl, I know. Next month is looking a little tough for me, but I want you to, I want you to get out of your comfort zone. I want you to set your goal. I said at the beginning of this call that I have a monthly PV goal of $6,000 minimum. For me, on, in a regular 30-day month, that's really easy for me. I break that down into every five days. So when I look at the calendar, by day five, I should have $1,000 in sales. By you know day 15, I should have, what, $3,000 in sales. And so if I'm at day 15 and I'm sitting at $1,500, that tells me, Lindsay, you better be doing something fun and exciting to get your sales up so you can stay on track for your goals. Same thing with party bookings. Set your monthly goal. What are you comfortable with having? I think four to six parties a month is fan-freaking-tastic. Um, set your monthly goal, write it down, put it near your computer, near your whiteboard, whatever, and do not stop doing things until you hit it. You have to get creative sometimes. The things that you used to do might not always work. Okay, the things that you used to do, that you try before that didn't work might work this month. You don't really know. To hit my sales goals, to hit my party booking goal, there's not just one thing I do ever. It is, they're like, swear to you, like tiny grains of sand, one by one by one by one, adding up to make this really large thing at the end of the month. So for me, the pick a number game is awesome. I do that in every party that I play but do it inside of your VIP group. Who says you can't play it inside of your VIP group? Um, that's where you can start it. I'm tempt I think I'm gonna do it again this month because my party bookings are low for next month. So do it inside of your VIP group, but play it in every party, get more bookings that way. Um, once you get that party, can work your tail off to get more off, off of that. You have that snowball effect, continue, continue, continue. Um, sharing the hostess reward program, talking about it, getting on live in your VIP groups or in your parties and actually showing like, this is what you'll get with a $150 party. And you can show them like what that looks like in sets. If you have a $300 party, which is about this many orders, this is what you're going to get. Um, they like to see that. Also, if you are doing any like hostess rewards, um, maybe you're putting together a bundle, maybe any hostess that has a party with you in March is going to be entered into winning something like whatever you're doing it's okay to switch things up and to try new things to see if it is received well um so like i said if you're doing any extras post those in the groups um post those in your current i'm sorry in your vip group in your current parties and then also include it in your follow-up messages 
So that picture of my hostess bundle, I include that in my hostess follow, I'm sorry, my customer follow-up messages and parties as well. Um, always, always, always follow up. So that just doesn't have to do with the party itself, which you should be doing. But if you have a sample request form, don't forget to look at that and see who might be interested in hosting a party. Even for those that say like, I don't want any information, you know, follow up, see how they like their sample. And when they say they liked it, be like, you know what? Or they can't afford it. Like, well, I can get you them for free. Why don't we have a party for you? Like I've got an opening this next week. Why don't we do that? Follow up, use that sample request form and don't be afraid. Also pay attention to the people in your VIPs who are in your parties too, who are buying a lot. Like if they're buying a lot, like why not get it for free? I have a stylist on my team who is amazing. And she was buying it like every party I was hosting and she was buying three and four times in one party. And I'm like, Elizabeth, I love you. And you are probably one of my best customers right now. And I hate to lose you, but I feel like I'm stealing from you. I think you just need to join. And she goes, yeah, you're right. And now she's amazing. <laughs> so pay attention to people like that. Um, you know, again, post your available dates and your spots. Um, make it seem last minute sometimes. Make it not so open-ended that you'll take anyone and everybody. Um, make it work for you. Sometimes just posting a last minute booking incentive is super fun. Um, I did mention Hostess Bingo in the beginning. That's something I can share with you gals. It's a, just a graphic that I share. That is really helpful as well because it does kind of push your current hostesses to think about which of their friends would be a good hostess in the future. Um, but ultimately get creative and have fun. So this is what a typical party looks like for me, but I do change things around. Like I said, I just have started doing some one hour like live parties, which are really fun. I also do something in my VIP group, which I would be happy to train you guys on in the future. It's basically like I run, I call it a mini mega party or a nail bash, depending on my mood. And I host it inside of my VIP group. And it's basically like this huge party inside of my VIP where it helps me to um, increase the amount of members in my group to get more sales. And then I open it up to all of my VIPs and I can sell $3,000 in three days every single time. <laughs> it's crazy. And I would love to share that with you guys, but there's different ways to have parties is what I'm trying to say. But at the end, you have to remember it's about them and them earning rewards. So you want to keep that at the forefront of your mind. It's not about you. Um, you know, Take your parties to the next level. Make Pay attention to what's working for you, okay? If you have a party and something goes so well, you're, make, right, make note of that and do it again. Maybe even tweak it to make it better. And then when you're like, God, you know, this really stunk. Well, what was it that stunk? You know, why do you think that happened? If maybe it was the hostess coaching, maybe your hostess was lost. Well, maybe you need to pay more attention to how you are coaching your hostesses. And then you need to pivot, change it up. Make it work better, tweak it slowly, but surely. But at the end of the day, you know, taking time to love on and organically grow your VIP group. Um, this is how I grow my VIP group is through those parties and posting on my personal page. The whole point of having parties is to grow your customer base, increase your sales, build connections, and hopefully grow your team. So it's a lot of info. And I feel like a lot of stuff that I share with you guys, I feel like you know this sort of, these sorts of things, um, but I feel like a lot of what I do, it's a, it's a lot of things that are kind of rote memory. It's just like breathing to me now at this point. I just know what to do and when to do it, but it took me time to kind of develop my, my own systems. So I am going to kind of start looking through some of the questions um, that were here. And if any of the leaders that invited me here want to unmute themselves and like read questions that you might've noticed to me um, that I might've missed, I would love to answer them. Hey, Lindsay, it's Kristen Pockris. Thank you so much. That was so amazing. I know everybody is gonna get a lot of great information from this and use it. So thank you for your time. We really, really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All of us on that. I'll go through a couple of questions that I noticed. Um, some people asked if you offer the fifth set free for the entire duration of your party, or do you do that maybe as an early bird special or just, you know, a one day thing? How are you doing that? Um, usually like if I extend a party, oh my gosh, I just found my son's sock in my sweatshirt. Um, mom life. 
if I'm doing like a, I usually get my party extension. Like if I'm extending the party, I will just do that for one day at the end. Um, my early bird special is usually just twosies. If I'm feeling generous, I will do an extra set from me as an early bird special. Also too, keeping in mind, like if you're running a party today and we had that launch today, um, I know that you're probably doing deals in your VIP group. You can all also include those deals in your party for one day, you know, do something fun. It's, there's no one telling you that you can't do it. Just do what works for you. I did that with the Valentine's day launch inside of my party. Um, but it's usually a very short, if I do a deal, it's short. I don't, ex I don't keep my deals open for a long time because when I do that, they forget. Yeah. And you want to create that urge, that sense of urgency to purchase. So I think that's great. Um, the biggest question was, will we be able to get this PowerPoint? I could send that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So if you send that to the lead in, in our leader chat, then we can all post sure. that in our stylist groups. Don't mind me. Um, okay. I'm just going to go through and ask or see what else I see. And then I'll let everybody else chime in. Um, are you making a lot of your graphics in Canva? I actually use PicMonkey. Okay. Good, good. And if anyone wants to train me on how to use over on your phone, I would love that because I cannot figure that dang thing out. How to use what? Over. Oh, I don't even know what that is. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love over. It's like the bet. Like I can jump in over and like pop a graphic out in like two seconds. Like I love it. And I cannot, I'm on it for an hour and it looks like a fourth grader made it. Well, make, I, actually that's probably giving myself too much credit. Okay. So <laughs> Andy's going to have to do a training. Sounds like Angie's going to do it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> um, people want to know how big your VIP group is. Um, right now I have about 2000 in it. That did start. You guys, let me re let me explain that. That started as my launch party of about 30 people. Okay. It was not, it wasn't, didn't start like that. I have organically grown that every single day since I started from posting on my personal page, samples, parties is how I grow it a lot. My VIPs are, are spoiled beyond belief and they know it. So they share my group and grow it for me in that sort of way. Um, I've never added one person on my own to that group. Good for you. Um, do you ever offer your hostesses something extra if they help you get a new booking? Um, yes, I do. So using the, um, the hostess bingo, that's part of it too. So they get extra goodies for like creating bingo lines and part of, part of it is that, but yeah, you totally could. It's not something that I really focus on and I probably should. Okay. If, and would we be able to see that hostess bingo card? Yes, I will. I will put that in our thread and you guys can pass it out. I actually got it from Molly Fitch and I think I have two. Um, I would really like to fix it up and make it look a little bit cleaner in my opinion, but I'm sure you can find some in the graphics groups as well, but I'll share that. Now, Lindsay, do you post that bingo just in that hostess chat? That doesn't go into the party group, right? No, that's just in the hostess chat. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. People would love to hear more about your mini mega party in your VIP group, but I realize that could be a whole other training. It is. I actually took this PowerPoint that I, I did a PowerPoint on that for a different team and I just kind of changed it up. I would love to train you guys on that because it is freaking amazing. It, I made, I made it up because I wasn't getting party bookings. And I asked my VIP group, I said, why aren't you guys wanting to party anymore? And they told me that my, I know my friends are not going to buy. And I, and obviously the point of having a party is that their friends buy, so they get hostess rewards. And I'm like, how can I get them hostess rewards? and yet still grow my customer base in a different way. And I, I literally made it up. And it's yeah, you can't, you can't tell us that you could do $3,000 in three days and not give us the goods. Like, you yeah, know, I will, I will, we'll, right. we'll do, we can do another training. It is, a, it's its own training though. You guys, it's, it's huge. It's my baby and I'm so proud of it. And my team loves it. Um, and I would love to share it with you. That'd be one you like a Tuesday that. training on that, Lindsay? I feel like I've heard that training on your, the one that you do in your VIP group. Isn't there one out there? Is it in the app? No, I wanted to. I told them I wanted to train on that, but they didn't let me. They wanted me to train on regular parties. Okay. Well, we'll we're going to, we're going to rebook you. So get ready yep. for that. I do have a call with uh, Lisa for a Tuesday, Tuesday training, but I don't know if she's going to let me. <laughs> we're all going to tell her this is what we want. I'm going to message yeah. her right now. Yep. So uh, yeah, I actually have a meeting with Lisa on Thursday, so I'm going to bring that up for you. So oh. I'll plug that. 
I feel like I need my PowerPoint for it though, because I need to show graphics and stuff like that, but I could probably figure it out. Well, she makes you use a graphic for Tuesday training. So you're, it's all yours, girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I lied. It's not Tuesday training this time. It's connect the dots again. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to be on Tuesday training. Yeah, we need you prime time. Yep. Last time they made me do it right after conference in Florida. It was not my favorite time to do that. <laughs> Um, can, we all just, um, can we all just take a minute and look at Ashley South's hair? She got it done today and it is like glowing. It's, by the way, she's just coming off of COVID and pneumonia. Like who right? looks like I mean, that right she now? She looks freaking amazing. So yes. She's I love how they threw you under the bus and told these everyone that you bitches. COVID. Sorry. Swear to God. Was well, today was my first day out of quarantine where I'm not contagious. I do still have pneumonia, but I was, I needed my hair done. It, I felt disgusted. <laughs> I figured once uh, Lisa announced it to the whole senior director and above training that you had it, it was kind of out of the back. Of the yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, babe. No, it's okay. Um, okay. Do you ever put a cap on how many hosts you have in a battle? Like, or you just as many people as you want in on that date? I, I probably don't like, I don't really like to do more than six. Um, I think six is a lot. On average, I would say I have three to four. Um, and if you have more for that week, I think that's great. But I would maybe ask them like one of them to, Hey, you know, would you be willing to do your party the week after, you know, maybe that next week only has two and kind of even it out. Um, the whole point is the reason why I do it that way is to save my sanity. I mean, I, I feel, I feel like there's no way and no reason to be posting the same stuff in four different places in a week. If you are lucky enough to have a lot of parties in a week, I do know that a lot of you flip your hostesses and, um, and use that group to become their VIP group. I'm not going to lie. I don't do a lot of that. I don't do a lot of hostess flipping. So that's something to take into consideration. If that's kind of your jam, you might not want to do a battle. You don't need to do a battle. It's just many, what I do. How many battles are you doing a month? And then um, you said you started like the majority, like you are you a week out on your parties or where are you at when you start and end? So I used to do like 25 to 30 parties a month and for a long time. And then things started to change. And that's kind of when the, the mini mega party I made up started because I was like, how can I keep this momentum going right now? I probably have on average, I would say 10 a month, 10 um, battle of the hostesses. No, no, no. 10 hostesses. So 10 parties. Um, but I usually, I, I like to structure my months. So my first week I don't do parties because that's when I like to onboard my new stylist and really focus on them and get, you know, when you have a team and you got to do all these things at the beginning of the month, you know, it's like starting school over every month. Um, and then I like to do my parties usually the second and third week of the month. So I'll do like two battles and they're usually like, you know, anywhere from two to six people in each. Okay. And then my last week of the month, I like to do something big in my VIP group. Like that's when I'll do like a live sale with my husband who is hilarious, or I'll pull out that wheel. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the wheel that you can get on Amazon where you put prizes. So I'll, I'll do something like that, or, or I'll do um, the mini mega. So I'm always doing something really big, usually at the end of the month, not this month because too many, too many launches. <laughs> All right. But that's kind of how I structure my month. So when I say parties, I don't mean, I don't mean individual. I mean like each person. Yeah. And that's a, that's really good because the, the um, training that Danette did last week, the Tuesday training that kind of goes along with, with her month and how she sets it up. And she really, she does something big in her VIP group, like a big shop, my stock or whatever at the end of the month. And she's kind of doing you know, those parties in the middle and that, so yeah, it kind of goes along Danette with your, um, with your method. And I like that, but I'm thinking like, why, why am I going to be doing five parties a month? Why don't I just bulk them all up in the first week, do the party, bust it out and then do the end of the month party. And just kind of, especially as an executive or, you know, when you get in those higher levels, it's like pop it out once and then you're golden. Yeah, I, I resonated with a lot of what you said, Danette, because I felt like you're really structuring your month to work for you. And that's what I like to do too. Um, and so I, it's smart. Like you don't really need to spread them out. That way you can get it done. You can you can really focus because now, you, now you're not spreading yourself so thin, in my opinion. And then you can really, you know, give it your all. Like you can really give it your all for like that, that one week 
on the parties, then you can really give it your all for maybe something you're doing in your VIP or getting your new stylist started um, successfully. Um, Are you changing up your parties within it? Meaning, so you might do a bingo or you might do a livestock sale or you might do a ladies night in. Like, are you changing that up as, you know, seasonally or as you come up with ideas or, and then where are you getting those ideas from as far as like, if you did, um, like I did a friendly feud and I found that in the Phoenix group. So like, where are you coming up with that stuff? So my regular parties, like I showed you guys tonight, um, are just, those are just in a Facebook group and I don't really change up the, the whole party theme. Like it usually is the same stuff typically, um, or I'm finding new graphics to put in or new, like interactive things if, that I find and I save and I think they're fun. Um, but it has like the same skeleton, but then the thing that I always do change up is that girl's night in. I always end with a girl's night in and I change that. And I get those graphics. I do not make those graphics because mama don't have time for that. But some people are so good at it and they love to share it. And that's where the graphics groups come in. Um, the Phoenix graphics group for stylists has my, in my opinion, my favorite girls night in, you go to their album section, they've got a ton and they just keep adding and adding and adding. And I'll just go and I'll save those to my phone. And um, literally my, my party template has all the same stuff until that last night. And it's like post one, post two. And it's like blank because I just, I fill those in. I don't have time to like, and I don't want to change everything up every single time, but that's easy to do. A question that came up a few times, and I remember even asking Ashley about this at first um, before I started doing battles. Are you telling these girls ahead of time that they're going to be part of a battle when you're booking hosts? Or are you just like right before it starts like, hey, you're all part of a battle? I get this question a lot. And I was really nervous when I started it because I thought like people wouldn't really like it. Um, I have never had one person have a problem with it ever. Um, I don't really tell them in advance. Most of them come from a battle party. So they kind of already know, like that's the vast majority. But even if they don't, I do my hostess coaching, like that private messaging, sending them the hostess guide, um, keeping, you know, getting in touch with them with it. And then when I create the party group on Friday and I message the hostesses, I'm like, hey, we're doing this battle style that's good for you because that means one of you is going to get an extra gift from me for getting the most orders at the end of this party. And they're like, cool. I've never had issues. If your girls are uptight, you might, but mine are, they seem to be fine. <laughs> you have a script that's, um, that you provide, like our team has a script that I've, you know, created and kind of mastermind with other leaders and things like that. Do you have a script that's for your battle of the hostesses for your team? like my party template? Yeah, because I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, you know, the, the majority of us are new stylists. You know, if I were new listening to you right now, I'd be like, this is amazing. Um, but also too, it's, it's like pretty vast and there's a lot of information that you're providing. It's great, but it's a little bit intimidating. So, you know, in that regard, um, just having something set up, do your girls go into a script that's like a, you know, a skeleton where you, they can go in and, and look at the, you know, like a script. So my new stylist, when I onboard them, I always ask them if they want me to run their launch parties for them. And usually they all want you to do that. So I do that. And I, I follow the pretty much the same exact thing. It's making it a battle is really not any different other than having the link tree and, and messaging all your hostesses at one time. It's the same thing as having a regular party. I always share my template with my new stylist so I, they know like what to expect for me to post. Um, as a team too, we do have a mock party Facebook group. Okay. It's party frozen in time, basically. Um, we have a thing for questions at the top but everything else is laid out with like graphics for them to use. And it's just kind of a, you know, it has like the girls night in and same sort of thing. Um, and then I've just kind of, and I developed that but I took that and now I just make it a little bit more personal. I guess is the best way to say it. Um, so I do have a template that I have on my computer. It's kind of chicken scratch and I share it with my assistant. Um, I'm happy to share it, but it doesn't really share much more um, because a lot of the stuff I shared tonight are things that I do outside of the template. Yeah, no, I was just thinking of building one out for my team. Yeah, so I, have something, I think the mock party you know. is really great. You can have graphics and then also have like blank graphics too. So they could take it and then like put in their own wording if they really wanted to, but also yeah. guys, like what I'm posting, it's just, 
I just share the color street information. Like you, they want to know how to apply. They want to know how to remove. They want to know how to mix things up and how to order, you know? Um, and obviously I throw in overlays because I think people miss on those a lot, but everything else is just more interactive stuff and fun. I'm not doing anything crazy good. It really has a lot to do with the hostess coaching, keeping the excitement and the engagement up and a lot of the follow-up. So, um, I know someone said, if, asked if I use post my party, I used to use post my party religiously until Facebook started putting everyone in Facebook jail and we all thought it was post my party and I haven't gone back. Um, I will be completely honest. Um, I do have an assistant. I've had her, she's been my assistant for a year and she does a lot of pre-scheduling for me um, because it works like that. I usually do it for the first few, I always post live for like the first two days. And then she usually schedules like the last day with the girls night in, which helps me a lot. Um, but I haven't heard any issues with post my party anymore. So I think, you know, you could totally use that, but just make sure that you're going in and interacting because that's where a lot of people fall flat. They put up the post, but they don't go back and respond you know, comment and, and engage with the guests. Um, people are asking if you can share a little bit more about your hostess coaching or if they can see the, did you say you had something you send, send them? A yeah. And it's not even anything fancy. It's literally an email. Um, and I, I could definitely share it. It's nothing pretty at all. Um, I just tell them I'm super excited for your party next week. Um, I just wanted to give you your, um, your, um, Shopping link one more time. Also, here is my um, sample request form for anyone that might want to give Color Street a try before your party starts. Again, I put that in their hands to pass out. Um, and then I do have a video. I made it a long time ago and I need to update it, but it's like literally a video of me talking about the party and like, hey, this is the first level of rewards. This is what that looks like. Here's level two. And I want them to kind of tell me what they're aiming for. Um, we also have a hostess coaching guide. Like I could share that too. And it's, it's good, but it never, I can't send it through Facebook messenger. It always marks it as spam and says that I'm going against the community standards. So that's why I email it. So that's pretty much it. And so they basically, I asked them to get back at me and tell me which nail sets they want um, for their bundle, what they want their goal to be. And then from there, once I know they've read it, I will share some screenshots with them of example posts that they could put on their personal page. So I'll look at past hostesses who have made like good posts on their personal page. I'll screenshot them and I save them an album in my phone. I'm like, here's some examples of things that you can put on your personal page. They like to see that. And that's pretty much it um, just to get them started. Again, I will check their personal page to see if they're doing anything and like, hey, your party's starting. Have you been putting any posts up? Do you have a, an invite list going? Um, some are really good, some never will. Um, sometimes too, you can always go on their personal page and be like, Hey, uh, Denise, I'm so excited for your party next week. Um, can't wait to see you and your friends. And like, maybe you post a picture just to put a little extra on their pages. That's great. Um, people are asking, or someone asked if you sell a lot from your own home inventory, like, are you doing a lot of live sales in your VIP or in these parties? In my VIP, I do in my parties. I don't. Um, other than this new one hour live that I started trying out and just, I'm trying to decide if it's something I'm going to continue, but it's something I just started and it didn't go as great as I was anticipating. But I know like, like just going back to the very beginning when I was a brand new baby stylist and I didn't know how to run a party because I've never done this before. I, I, I really paid attention to what I thought was working well and I can, and I made it better. And then I paid attention to what wasn't working well and I tweaked it to keep making it better. So I know that I can have successful live one hour parties with my stock and my inventory if I take the time to do those that self-reflecting and make it better in the future. Um, I do sell, I don't, I do, a, I give away a lot of my sets because I get so much for free because I have so many of my VIPs ordering. I get a ton of hostess rewards. Um, I know a lot of you do too. I, I'll do... I'll do mystery hostess too. So like my, my customers are getting my, you know, my goodies. I do a lot of that. Um, I'll do a lot of like buy three, get two in my VIP. Sometimes I'll do buy three, get three. And they know like I ain't messing around. Like that's one of my better sales. Um, they love live parties where I sell my stock and I always reinvest the money. I always reinvest it. Like 
I will pay attention to like what it was costing me to ship things out and I won't reinvest that money back in. But if you guys are doing live sales or you're selling from your inventory, you've got to reinvest back in your business because those nail sets are free. They are free. And if you don't put it back in your business, you are not adding back to your hostess rewards to get more free stuff. You're not adding to your commissions and you're not adding to your volume. You literally will go stagnant. So always, always, always reinvest. I mean, if you got to keep 50 bucks, keep 50 bucks. I don't care. But reinvest the majority back into your business because that has been, that, that's like that snowball effect to continue you going. Can you talk a little bit more about funneling people from the parties to your VIP group, like how you motivate that transition? I know you talked about posting it and you're messaging them about that, but it seems some people are still having struggles. We all do, right? With certain guests coming over to the VIP. So do you have secrets for us? <laughs> yeah. Well, not everyone's going to come. That's just the bottom line. So you have to like take that off your shoulders right now. You're not going to get every single person to convert over. Some people have stylists already. Some people are just in the party to support their friend and make a, a sale. And then they, you know, they're going to go back to their girl and that's okay. So get that off your shoulder right now. Um, the, the big things that I do is I talk about my VIP in my initial video when I'm welcoming people. Um, when I'm doing my thank yous, every single time I thank them for an order, I am tagging my VIP group in that thank you post and say, don't forget to join, you know, and then you put your at in your VIP group. That's where I can do all my fun sales games and giveaways and you don't want to miss out. Um, I also mentioned too, that I will sometimes comment on the post too. Like after I posted it and their friends are commenting, be like, Hey, I'm just gonna look for a name you know, Hey, Denise, I keep finding a Denise. Hey, Denise, when you get your nail sets, will you make sure that you post your nail fee in tag your VIP group? So I do that. Um, again, they get points for joining my VIP group during the girls night in or anytime during the party, they join it and then they get points for it. That helps a lot. Um, and then again, when I do my live ending follow-up video, I talk about it again. And then when I'm following up with the guests, I send them personal messages. Now, not every guest is going to see your personal message. You're not friends with all of them. Um, and I do not friend every guest. I will friend the ones that come in my VIP, but I don't want to friend every single guest because that gets kind of spammy. Um, but I still send messages regardless of whether or not they see it, because I just feel like I'm doing my due diligence and I'm giving my follow-up. So I do those things. to. That's a lot of different things. And hopefully the people that want to join will. And those that don't want to, all well. So yeah, um, I don't keep track of my points, Tamara. Um, they keep track of their own points. I don't, I don't, nah, -uh, no. Heck no, I don't keep track. And then in my final post for the night, it'll say like, this is the final post, drop your total in the comments below. And then I'm like, here's a recap, this many for this, this many for this. So they have it. I honestly, like, I don't really pay much attention. Um, the win person with the most points doesn't win. I just, if they have like 20, like, let's say they have 30 entries. I'm not going to put their name in my wheel 30 times, but maybe I'll put it in three times. If they're in the twenties, I'll put it in two times, like save yourself. You do what you want to do. And if you don't want to go live, you can just pick your winners on your own. <laughs> you can kind of rig it, I suppose, but it's nice for them to see your face again, I think. So, yep. I guess I'd answer a lot of those questions. I don't keep track of those points. Why do you personally friend someone who has joined your VIP? You better be. You should be doing that. Um, it's in my questions, um, Nicole. I always friend everyone who joins my VIP. They might not always accept it, but I do um, because I want them to see what I'm posting on my personal page. I want to. I want to gain. It, that like friendship and that interaction. My personal page is, I mean, I do post a lot about my life, but it's nothing super personal that I like don't want anyone to see. My Facebook page is literally, it is my business. It's, if you are not being personal and sharing some, something about you and your life, you are lacking that connection. And that's what we're about. So I friend everybody. Hope that answers that question. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. I think that's mostly everything. I know there's a lot of questions, you guys. I just really hope that find the things that are working for you and continue to do them and make them a little bit better. When you get bored, switch it up. 
maybe switch your template up, switch the way you're doing things, keep it fun and for you, because if you're bored with it, they're going to feel it. Um, if the way you're running parties isn't working, try something different. Maybe do a live party. Maybe do do something in your VIP group. Like I said, I hope I can you know share my um, magic of the mini mega. I think that would be awesome. Um, if you cannot get parties booked, try the pick a number game in your VIP to start. If you don't have anything on the calendar, if not that doesn't work. Um, sometimes it won't. I mean, it doesn't always work for me either, but I still continue to try privately messaging people. Do everything you can. You have no idea. If you decide to stop asking after 10 messages, you have no idea if number 11 was going to say yes. And then once you get that party in your pocket, do everything you can to get another party booked off of that. You got to keep that momentum going. It's not easy, you guys. I know it's not easy. I do not think it's easy. It's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. All right. Um, someone asked if I get more than one booking from a host, you put them in the same or split them up, do whatever works for you. I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, they know different people. They both knew Mary, but they know other people too. So it's not a huge deal. Maybe Mary will order twice when you have their battle. Just do what works for you. So yes, I am in Minnesota. I live outside of St. Cloud in Sartell. Um, I see I have another um, Minnesota people. I'm actually from Ohio. I was born and raised there and went to Ohio State and then moved to Arizona for eight years. So I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> a little bit of a mutt. So thank you guys so much. Um, I will pass on some of the graphics and things like that that I was sharing tonight um, to, your, to your senior execs and they will share those with you. But I hope that I get to um, see you guys again, can train some more and I cannot wait to um, pull your leaders and to my team page. And so they can share all the wonderful things that they are doing. And I will get this recording out to you guys, okay? Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. me. All right. Bye. Thank you.